is David Starr from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today I'm doing a roundtable with director Garrett Bradley about her powerful new documentary, Time, which follows the story of Fox and Rob Rich. We're going to talk to Garrett in just a second, but first let's check out that trailer. And while you're doing it, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, that helps us out a lot. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hey. Hello. I'm Jen. I'm going to be the voice of God, your moderator here in this room. Hi, Jen. Uh, Hi, so we have David, Dean, and Jared here. Uh, Garrett, thank you so much for joining us. This is uh, th this film was was an inspiring film, and it was a, a very personal, emotional journey. One thing that I noticed, uh, you know, it started out in black and white, and then at some point, I kind of expected it to tr turn to color. But the entire film was in black and white, and I guess you know, was that uh, you know a choice on your end? Was it something that just maybe the original footage was black and white? You guys. You kind of like the look of it and wanted to keep that going forward. I guess what was the uh, was the, the insight behind that? Yes. Well, so there's there's two answers to that question. I think first is that my I had made a short film called Alone, which uh, which is a 13 minute New York Times op doc, and that film was in black and white. And that film was in black and white because the film before it was in black and white. And I really kind of visually was only seeing in black and white. Like I, you know, when we think about color, there's a lot, color is another form of storytelling and there's a lot of spectrums and qualities and, and um, gradations of the type of color that you want to work with. And I was having a really hard time kind of identifying what that would be for this. Um, I also felt, you know, that the the archive actually was in color, and ultimately we sort of decided not only to go back to create uniformity between the short film, and I really see the short film and this film as being sister films. Like I hope they always kind of are together and stay together, um, but it also helped create a level of visual linearity that then allowed us to kind of jump back and forth with time uh, within the story itself. Um, I think in a way that that felt hopefully a little bit more seamless. Thank you. Dean, next question. All right, Garrett, nice to meet you. Oh, good to meet you. Oh, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Hey. Excellent. Well, I was really amazed by the opening montage. It really spoke to me about how much you were able to convey about the story, about the character of Fox and her family with the editing of the archival footage. And I want you to talk about the opening montage, because I was very impressed how you did it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, I think that the opening montage for me was, you know, right when we're, I think it's, it was really important that people kind of meet Fox and meet the family on their own terms, you know? Um, and I think as a documentarian or as a filmmaker making documentary films, that doesn't take away from or even challenge um, a directorial vision, um, I think, if anything, it to a certain extent kind of reinforces the idea of collaboration, which it, which is what filmmaking is, um, no matter how much it, it's thought about sometimes as sort of being a singular vision of one director. Um, and, and really what I mean by that is that, you know, Fox was, uh, she is a matriarch, you know? Um, and so it, that montage really focuses on seeing her be a mother um, and seeing her uh, in, um, in her, in one sort of private and internal state as a mother. And then shortly after that, I mean, the next scene that we see after that montage is her in present day giving direction, um, you know, to another filmmaker, she's shooting sort of a car commercial. And so I felt like those were right away, I wanted to just dive people into her public persona and her private persona and how all of these things kind of interconnect with one another. But again, to really meet her on her terms in terms of who she is and her power and her vision. Well, that was one of the best ones. You had me blown away. And it's like, once I'm on touch, I saw it, I'm directly hooked onto this film. So oh, thank, you. thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And Jared? I heavily agree with that theme, by the way. Heck yeah. That was amazing, Jared. Um, this was my first introduction to you. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Love your style. I think the black and white really helped just convey the, the over, I'm not going to get it. Sorry. You already just explained it. Um, but mostly my, my thing was how has this project, finishing this project, getting through this and actually spending time with such like, such a humbling project, how has that impacted you as a director and like, like actually just completing this and like, what's the next step for you? Um, well, I don't know what my next step is. I, I try as much as possible to be in the present moment and to honor the present moment. I think, 
as a filmmaker, it's really important to do that. I think specifically working in a documentary context where you don't have control over the future, you don't have control over the ending of something, you really have to honor the present moment as the thing that will reveal everything that you need to know in order to make the film as great as it needs to be. Um, so I think that, you know, I, I learn a lot from everybody that I work with. I think that um, part of what was, in, what was so inspiring to me in working with the family was thinking about um, alternative forms of resistance that are maybe less talked about and, and thinking about love uh, for one another and unity, right? The ability to stay in touch with your family, um, self-documentation um, as three radical forms of resistance. Um, that are equal to, and I think just as powerful as, as other forms that we might be more used to. Thank you, yes. Yeah, thank you. So, David. so one of the things uh, that I really loved about this film is it felt like a very personal journey. It almost felt like, and I think this is maybe what you mentioned earlier, we were kind of given a window into the family's home movie archives and we were able to kind of experience that with them. And one of the things that struck me when I was watching it was I kept expecting some sort of like, cars to kind of guide us along you know give facts or give you know a passage of time and you never got that and i think you know it made the film feel that much more personal was that something that kind of you actively you know didn't did not want to include when you were kind of putting this movie together the i'm sorry what did i not want to include do you mind just repeating uh, that well, you know like uh, some, some more kind of context for shots you know sometimes you would have like a card saying like five years later or you know he's been in prison for 19 years and this is you know thanksgiving day you know there, there was none of that you kind of had to get the clues from what was happening on the film yeah i appreciate that question i mean i think um i'm excited by the challenge of not doing that <laughs> you know uh, because when we live life uh, we don't have like little labels or or anything that's giving us context for anyone we're meeting or, or how, how we're supposed to be reading and experience and so um you know, I'm not sure that I've necessarily perfected that. I think it's something that I'm I'm invested in as a filmmaker of how to work within this, work within two dimensional space where you can only tell a story and share an experience one frame at a time. And that, you know, and we as human beings, uh, our experiences are 360, right? Like we, we have holistic, we are holistic beings and, and the things that we experienced, um, our histories, uh, even moments before this one all inform our present moment. And so how can filmmaking, um, how can I use framing, how can I use uh, the craft of editing and sound and all the different qualities of filmmaking to try as much as possible to elicit that same reality. Um, so that's partially why um, why I don't work within that framework. Um, and I also I also very much believe that intuition um, is sometimes um, just as valuable and just as informative as sort of the facts. You know, um, not everyone would would agree, but <laughs> I love that you trust the viewer. It's uh, it's something that you don't get as much in in movies nowadays. Thank you, David. Thank you, indeed. This will be the last question. Oh, last question. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> <Too good. laughs> well, one of the things I really enjoyed about the movie is the performance with Fox. She's a real performer, larger than life character, and we see her deliver multiple powerful speeches to audience that, whether it's at church or a support group, it makes you cry. You cannot leave without crying. So I'm interested to hear about how you navigate those qualities in making time. Yeah, I mean, I think that you have to honor um, the people that you're collaborating with, you know, for their in their totality and, and for who for who they are. Um, and I think that um, I think that, you know, black women in particular really are holding the country together. You know, if you think about the fact that there's 2.3 million people that are incarcerated and a disproportionate number are, are black men, um, then you have to think about the effects of that. You have to think about that there's at least double, if not triple that number in our country who are affected, who are having to pick up the brunt of what it means to have a loved one not physically present and not physically there. And so strength is not something that I think um, is, is, uh, is new or surprising uh, to most people, to the majority of our country. Uh, but I think being able to celebrate that and to show it, um, uh, to, to show it as, um, as, as something to honor, you know, um, 
I, in film was really important to me. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. That will conclude the round table. Thank you so much for participating. Thank Good to meet you, Garrett. Thank, Thank you so Garrett. much. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was Garrett Bradley talking about her new documentary, Time, which follows Fox and Rob Rich on, is their, in their journey through the criminal justice system. It's available to stream on Amazon Prime October 16th, and you should definitely check it out. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps us out a lot and makes sure all of our videos go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you.